Hello guys, how are you? I hope you all are okay. Thank you, I am good. Uh, today we are going to learn something, like yesterday. Today we are going to read a text. It will be about unusual holiday homes. Uh, it will be in this echo year. And then you are going to look at first conditional. As you remember, we learned conditionals, zero conditional, first conditional, and second and third conditional. We learned about all of that, but today we are going to deep look uh, at first conditional. After that, we are going to look some vocabulary about this text. Uh, if you are ready, we can go. Let's start. Yes, guys, what do you think about these pictures? I am worrying about your opinions, so please tell me your ideas about these pictures. What do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yes, guys, I see trees. Some trees like you. Yes. Do you think it is a village? Is it a village or a city? Yeah, I think so. It most probably a village. And it has a stove or something like that inside it because you know, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Let's go on. What do you think about this picture? What do you see, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are three bags. Yes. How do we use that? Yes. Yes. Two in cold weather. We use this and we cannot be cold. And then, do you see a large window? Yes, I can see that. It seems most probably it seems it's good because you can see all of the village under your fingers, under your uh, hoods. You can see trees, you can see sea, maybe if there is a sea around there. You can see birds, you can see different animals, because it's a village, guys. <laughs> you can see lots of kind of animals out there. Yes. Let's go on, okay. Yes, time. As I, guys, sorry. As I said before, we are going to read a text which is about Echo Yurts. Echo Yurts is an unusual holiday home. Uh, we are going to read a text about that and we are going to answer these questions. There, is, there are many questions and we are going to answer that. What is an Echo Yurt? We will the answer of this question after Read the text. Are they comfortable? What if it rains? How many people does a youth cater for? And what about location? Can you guess these uh, questions answers? What is an effort? Do you know what does it mean? Okay, let's skip that question. The second question is, are they comfortable? Do you think this echo yurt is comfortable? Maybe, I think maybe it's comfortable or maybe not because maybe, what if it rains? It will be rainy days, but if it rains, are we going to wet, get wet? We don't know. How many people does a young child for? Guys, for like me, I have a huge family, so if I want to go a holiday, I want to go with them, so this 
echo yours should be huge to my family because we are six members in our family. Let's go on. What about location? Location is important, guys, for you because uh, you should have an access or you can go whatever you want, whenever you want in the holiday. So location is absolutely important. Let's go on. Vocabularies. These vocabularies, we are going to look at the vocabularies in our text. First, I want you to open your notebooks and write these vocabularies on your notebooks. Then, guess what does it, what that, what they are mean. We, do you think what holiday means? You write there. Holiday means I think blah blah blah. What do you think Equiyurt means? I think Equiyurt means blah 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 blah. I want you to that in five minutes. You have five minutes, guys. Guys, uh, before skip, I want you to repeat after me. I will say uh, one by one what how, and you are going to repeat after me. Holiday. Echo yurt, dwelling, unique, portable, nomadic people, washing facilities, watertight, catter, book, awaits. Yes, let's go on. Guys, as I said before, we learned about conditional and conditionals, you know, conditional meaning. Uh, but today we are going to look deeply at first conditional, but uh, firstly I want to look all of this conditional uh, in case any situation. Let's go on with uh, the meaning of conditional. The meaning of conditional Can you open? Okay Let's look at all of these conditionals uh, In our main clause We have some tenses In our if clause we have some tenses Or model verbs We are going to look at all of them First of all zero conditional in zero conditional, we use uh, zero conditional for facts which are generally true or scientific fact. The condition always has the same result. The result is never changed in zero conditional, guys. It has to be uh, real and it will be most probably a uh, scientific fact. And it's generally true. And let's look at the structure of zero conditional. In a clause, we use present simple tense. If you stand in the rain, stand here is present simple. You get wet, get wet, get here is present simple. Which means we use present simple both of the uh, uh, sentences. In if clause and main clause, we use present simple. Okay. Uh, can you look at the second example? If you hit ice, it melts. It's a scientific fact, right, guys? Yes. If you hit ice, heat here, uh, present simple, it melts. Melts is present simple too. Let's go on with first conditional. In first conditional, it should be a possible situation in the future. Guys, it's important. We are not talking about now. We are going to talking about possibility in the future. And it's, it's important. Predicting a likely result in the future if the condition happens. 
You have condition describing the result of a certain condition. The if clause tells you the condition if you study hard, and the main clause tells you the result. You will pass your exam. The order of the clauses doesn't change the meaning. Okay, guys. Um, if you study hard, you will pass your exam. You will pass your exam if you study hard. It's not uh, changing the meaning. You have some condition, and if this condition happens, you will have uh, a result. But it should be have a possibility to occur. Okay. Let's look at the first conditional uh, structure. In if clause, we use like zero conditional present simple. In main clause, we use future tense. Let's look at the examples, guys. If it rains, we will cancel the trip. If it rains, rains here present simple tense. Rains. Can you see this? We will cancel three. We'll cancel here future tense. If you study, you will pass the exam. If you study, study here present simple, you will pass the exam, will pass is future tense. Can you understand me guys? Do you have a, do you have a, do you have any problems guys? Okay. Let's go on with second conditional. In second conditional, it should be hypothetical or unlikely situation. It's not like first conditional because in first conditional we have a possibility, but in second conditional it should be impossible. It should be has no possibility to occur. Uh, maybe a little, but it will be not going to happen. We know that. An unreal or improbable situation now or in the future. Guys, as you remember, in first conditional, we are going to we, we go we um, talk about future, not now. But in second conditional, we talk about now and future, but it's not has a possibility to happen, to occur, okay? Let's look at the structure of second conditional. If I won the lottery, I will travel a lot. If I won, won here, past simple. We use past simple in the if clause. And we will use a model verb in, a model verb, uh, would, you know, would we learn about that? Would in main clause, okay? If I won the lottery, I would travel. Would travel here is our main sentence. A lot. Uh, let's look at the second example. If I, uh, if they sold their house, they will be rich. If they sold their house, sold here is past simple. And the other sentence, sorry, the main clause, they will be rich. Would be here our main clause. Guys, uh, if I won a lottery, I will travel a lot, but I will not won a lottery. I will not be able to... <coughs> Guys, if I won a lottery, I will travel a lot. But I cannot win a lottery because it has a little tiny, tiny possibility to occur. It's almost impossible to occur. If they sold their house, they will be rich, but they, but they didn't sell. They will not sell this house and they will not be rich. It's impossible to, they will be rich. There is no possibility to occur this situation. Okay, let's look at the final one, which is third conditional. In third conditional, uh, the person is imagining a different past. Here, in third conditional, you have some sorrow. You will have some regretful to did that. It's past. If you cannot do anything at all. The person is imagining a different past, imaginary situation that didn't happen. You are imagining that you didn't do that, but you did it and you have to see the result of that. 
because you did it, but you are not have sorrow, you are regretful to do that, but you are not going to do anything. Let's uh, look at the structure of third conditional, guys. Third conditional, in it clause, we use past perfect. In main clause, we use mult and uh, we have and third pars past participle, guys. Uh, let's look at the examples. If you had studied, you will have passed the exam. If you had studied, had studied here past perfect. As you can see here, we use past simple in second conditional, but in third conditional, we use past perfect. And in main clause, you will have passed the exam. Will have passed here is will have plus third past past participle. If you have studied, you will have passed the exam, but you didn't study well. You had to do study well, but you didn't. So you are not passed the exam. You failed the exam. You have to. Uh, you don't have. You don't. You will not do anything with that because it's past time. You cannot study right now. You had to study in the past. If I had been sick, I would have gone to your party. But I cannot go to you. But I didn't go to your party because I was sick. If I not be sick, if I didn't be sick. I can, I could go to your party, but I didn't because I was sick. If I hadn't been sick, hadn't been, it's past perfect here. Uh, I would have gone to your party. Would have gone uh, is pa uh, would have plus past participle, guys. Do you have any questions about this part? This is important, guys. You will see it close in your every stages of your life of your uh, schools or your studies so you will have to know these conditions okay do you have any questions let's go on if you are ready okay Before we are going to look deeply the first conditional. So let's look deeply to first conditional. Use the first conditional to talk about something that might happen in the future if a condition exists. You should have the possibility to occur that situation to see your results. Uh, Let's look at the structure of uh, first conditional. We learned that, but we will we see one more time. Uh, in in clause we use present tense. In main clause we use future imperative or modal verb. You know imperative. And we use comma between two seconds. Two. Uh, and we use comma between two clauses. With if clause and main clause, there are there is comma between them. Uh, if a condition exists, the result will be true. Exists here is present tense, will be here future tense. Let's look at the other examples. If you study, you will pass the exam. If you study, study here. Yes, present tense. You will pass the exam. Will pass? Yes, future tense. The other example. If he doesn't call, you should tell me immediately. Doesn't call? Yes, present tense. You should tell. Should tell? Model verb. Right, guys? You are good at this. If your room is tidy, you can leave. Is here? Yes, present simple. You can leave, can leave here. Model work, you're right. If we win, we will celebrate soon. If we win, win here. Yes, present tense. We will celebrate soon. We'll celebrate. Yes, future tense. Guys, here uh, there is an important thing. 
Uh, you can, as I said before, I said it before uh, at the beginning of our class. You can change the clauses. You can put the main clause first, and then you can put the in clause second. You can do that, but there is a comma, as you know. So you have to use comma after the if clause. You cannot use comma after the main clause. Uh, if you want, do you want to? You want to uh, first write main clause and after if clause, but you cannot use comma between them. Okay? You just can use comma after the if clause, comma main clause. Okay? Okay. Uh, there is an important thing too. We cannot use will in the if clause. In if sentences, as you can see here in the past uh, slides, we didn't use will in if clause. This is an important. Uh, you should know that. Do you have any problems with first conditionals because we are going to analyze in a text soon? Okay. If you want to do something different for your next holiday, you have come to the right place. We have a wide range of alternative and exciting holiday options waiting for you. We are confident that you will find the holiday of your dreams with us. Luxury hotels are great, but are they truly memorable? If you want a unique, unforgettable experience, you will love the accommodation we have waiting for you. Echo yours if your perfect holiday means getting away from everything and getting close to nature. Our echo yurt will not disappoint you. What is an echo yurt? A yurt is portable dwelling traditionally used by nomadic people across Asia. It's a kind of circular, circular domed tent. Are they comfortable? If you expect our yurt to be primitive, you will be surprised. As you can see, our rooms are cozy, warm and comfortable. The rooms are heated by a central stove and maintain their heat even in the coldest weather. Traditional decoration and furniture make our rooms beautiful and cozy. A microwave and a fridge in each yurt will make your stay very comfortable. Shower and washing facilities are located at close distance from the yurt and are kept hidden at all times during the cooler, uh, cooler times of the year. Let's go on. What if it rains? You might ask, what will I do if it rains? The answer is simple. You can relax and keep dry because our youth are completely watertight. You won't get wet if it rains. How many people does a youth cater for? If you want to come with friends, you can share one of our larger youth which sleeps seven people. What about location? If you want to discover the delights of friends, Spain or Britain, you will find a number of eco youth villages in the middle of the beautiful countryside in each of these countries. Each echo yurt village is in a peaceful grace location but with an easy reach of many local attractions. Let's look at the if clauses in our text. If you want to do something different for your next holiday, you have come to the right place. If you want to do something different for your next holiday, here you want, want is yeah. Present simple tense. You have come to right place. It's a present simple tense. Uh, do you remember if clause structure? Yes, present simple, present simple. And then, if you want a unique, unforgettable experience, you will love the accommodation we have waiting for you. If you want, want here in the present tense, will love is future tense in here. Aquarius, if your perfect holiday means getting away from anything and close to nature, our Aquarius will not disappoint you. Here means here present tense and will not disappoint its future tense.
If you expect our hero to be primitive, you will be surprised. Expect your present tense and you will be surprised in your future tense. And let's go on. Look, is there any clothes that I didn't see? No. Let's go on. What if it rains? Uh, what will I do if rains? Uh, in if clothes we have rains. In many clothes we have will do. I will do. Here is question time, but you can see the main clothes will do. You won't get wet if it rains. Rains here present simple and won't get is feature tense here. If you want to come with your prince, you can share one of our larger youth with your sweet sleep. Seven people. Here, uh, want to come here present tense. And you can share, can share here is present model verb in our text. Sorry, in our uh, main clause. If you want to discover the light of friends in Britain, you will find a number of equity village in the middle of the beautiful countryside in each of these countries. If you want to discover here present tense and then you will find a number will find here its future tense. I think that's all in if close in this text. Let's look at the answers, our questions. Uh, can you remember uh, these questions? We had some questions about aquariums. Now, what is an aquarium? Are they comfortable? What if it rains? How many people does a carry for? What about location? Do you know all of do you know these questions? And now we are going to answer these questions. Here you can see the answers, the answer of first questions. What is an aquarium? Uh, it's a yurt, is a portable dwelling traditional used by nomadic people across Asia. It's kind of a circular dog tent. Are they comfortable? Our second question. Uh, and yes, it says it's our cozy, warm and comfortable. And we said what if it rains? And the answer here is you can keep and relax. You can relax and keep dry because our rooms are completely waterproof. Here the uh, answer of these questions. How many people does they cater for? Seven people about location. If you want to discover the life of friends, pain of birth, then you will find a number of people in your village in the middle of the beautiful countryside in each of these countries. These countries. Yes, that's all about our questions. You uh, have learned the uh, answers of that questions. Yes, guys. Now we are going to look our vocabularies. As I said before, our uh, beginning of the class, there are some vocabularies that we will learn in the text. Now we are going to the meaning meanings of these words. Holiday, a day or days which we are off and have some rest. The next one is Ecoyurt. As you can see here, it is a truly handcrafted and circular yurt. And the other one is dwelling. Dwelling means a house or place which a person lives in. Our house is a dwelling. Okay, let's go on. Unique means being the only one of its kind. A 
unlike anything else that's going on. Portable, it means able to be easily carried or moved, especially because being of a lighter and smaller version than usual. Uh, nomadic people, a member of people that has no fixed home but wanders from place to place. Fashion pencils, as you can see here, it is including a supply of hot and cold water, soap or other suitable means of cleaning, towels or other suitable means of drying. The other one is watertight. It means no water enters or passes through it. Cater uh, means provide food and drinks for an event or an occasion. Book to register something such as name for some future activity or condition. You can book a hotel, you can book a reservation at a restaurant, and then the last one is await. Await means wait for. Uh, we know wait, but there is a differences. There are a different. There are differences between wait and await. Let's look at the differences between them. Wait is used with a preposition. We use for and on prepositions with wait, and it is less formal. We can say it's informal, but it's not informal. Informal. It's more infor less informal, uh, less formal. Then await can be used with both things and people. Let's look at the examples we will understand. I've been waiting for you for ages. You cannot wait someone for ages. You are not has a infinity uh, lives. We are waiting on confirmation of the process for this. As you can see here, we are using on and for and you, we are see people here and we are things here after the wait. In waiting, in, in a wait, sorry guys, it must be followed by an object. You have to put an object after the await. More formal than wait can only be used with things. It cannot be used with people. I am waiting your reply. Your reply. I'm not awaiting you. I'm awaiting your reply. I am waiting you. We cannot uh, use that formation. Yes, guys. This is our activity. Yes, guys, I will give uh, you a homework, this worksheet, and you are going to fill these blanks and uh, you will bring with uh, yourself, with you, tomorrow. Uh, we will check this tomorrow. And let's look at this first condition uh, exercise. You have five minutes, guys. You will uh, fill the blanks with structural first conditional for just first conditional you are going to fill in the blanks you have five minutes guys after that we will check this together okay guys are you ready you blah blah enough money if you blah blah more hours you we cannot use will in if clause, we know that. So, we can use will or present or model verb in main clause. You will not earn enough money if you don't work more hours. Congratulations, well done. Many workers will use their jobs if the factory closes down. 
Good job. My uncle, blah, blah, go to, got to the opera if he, blah, blah, to get the tickets. My uncle can go to the opera if he remembers to get the tickets. If he doesn't finish the vegetables, he will not have a dessert. They blah blah angry if we blah blah, then next Saturday we promise it, promise to go. They will be angry, good job, if we do not visit them next Saturday. Good job, guys. I like your, your answers. Now we have a cabaret activities, guys. You will have, you will uh, fill in the blanks with these words. You have five minutes. After five minutes, we are going to check your answers. Let's look at these vocabularies. Some humans are born with blah blah supernatural talents. Unique. Yes, that's right. I am blah blah your email. A weight. Yes, right. Let's look at the one. My blah blah was small and I could hardly entertain an echo in it, but it seemed much larger for being a single apartment and more strong neighbors. Our dwelling. Let's look at the fourth one. The restaurant can blah blah for private, private and business gatherings. The restaurant can cater for private and business gatherings. The other one is the last one. Yes, portable video games are designed to be fun in short bursts and in display. Thank you guys for this lesson. I like your all your answers. Thank you. We will go on uh, tomorrow. I just want you to do your homework. I will uh, give you this. We are going to see each other tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye bye.